Okay, so because of popular demand, uh, I'm going to show you how to make this image, uh, which I posted to Reddit uh, yesterday, and it already has like 1.7 up thousand upvotes, not to toot my own horn or anything, but people are asking how I did it, so I'm going to show you. Uh, this is my first tutorial, which means I'm probably not very good at it, and I'm probably going to make some beginner mis mistakes because this is also my first ever project that I did on my own um, but yeah uh, I'm gonna show you how to make this and except for the table or the surface down here which sucks anyway uh, we're gonna leave that out I'm gonna leave the table to someone else to show you how to do but we are going to make the cup and the liquid and the ice cubes and the bubbles and uh, yeah I'm gonna show you how to do that right now put that to the side. This is what this looks uh, like in Blender uh, from the camera camera's point of view here. Um, these are the ice cubes. They're three separate objects. Um, this is the liquid with the bubbles in it. And here's the cup. It's uh, three, uh, well, three, four, five objects in total that we're going to make today. And I'll show you how. First, let's open a new scene. Uh, don't save and the most satisfying part about blender is that you get to select everything and delete it every time you start <laughs> so first we need some references for that I recommend that we go to this website dimensions.com I can recommend it uh, in general dimensions.com is a uh, database of well, dimensions, um, for example, here, furniture, uh, uh, wookies, uh, staircases, everything. Anything you can imagine has a, you know, a file here that explains the dimensions of it. Kind of like a, you can look at the Toyota Corolla, for example. Uh, you can see um, wireframes from all perspectives with measurements which is really cool for when you start modeling stuff. So I found the beer pong cups, which are solo cups, obviously. And uh, so we're going to download this picture right here. And we will use this to uh, model the cup. So for that, I'm going to use my screen capture tool, Giazo. And I'm just going to select the cup here. Don't need anything else. And that made a very loud sound. And then just download this and then we can import it into Blender. So in order to import this image, what you do is press, press Shift-A in the 3D viewport, and then go down to Image, Background, and you select whichever image you want, but we want to use the beer pong uh, one that we just downloaded. And then if we do this, you can see it appears in the background. But what you'll notice is that it's appearing kind of weirdly somewhere in space, kind of weirdly rotated. That's because we did not make sure to look at this from the side or from the front. So in order to look at the scene di directly from the front, we press 1 on the numpad and then we do the same thing again. Background image, beer pong. There we go. Here we have our beer pong uh, image. And now to scale it, first of all, we're going to move it to the side. Then we are going to do the same thing again. Shift A to add something. We're going to go to Mesh and we are going to add a circle. And down here in the Add Circle menu, we're going to tell it exactly which radius we want it to be. And in order to do that, we just look at the whoops, we look at the picture. We're going to start down here, and this is 57 millimeters in diameter. And so we can just go in the radius because radius is half of the diameter. We can go and type in 57 divided by two millimeters and it automatically sets the circle to the right size here we can zoom in and the problem f the first problem you'll have is that you can't really zoom in without it clipping like this so to do uh, fix that just press n to bring up the sidebar go into view and change this clip start value to something very small like this and then you can zoom in much further now that our circle is um, as small as the base of the cup should be, we're going to go back into this view and 
we're going to find this, which is way too big right now. And we're going to scale it down, press S to scale, make it very small. Oops. I hit it there on accident. Um, move it over to the middle. As you can see, this is our circle here. Uh, it's just a, th a line from the side, obviously. So we have to scale it down a little bit more. What you can do is actually place this on the circle like so. Make sure it's more or less in the middle here. Like this. And then we, what you can do is press period on your keyboard and switch this to 3D cursor. And now when we scale it, you can see that it scales like this instead of um, on the median point. And we can see our circle is about this size. If we zoom in here a little, you can see the circle ends here and here. So we can scale it a little bit. Um, this looks about right. To scale something a little bit in um, smaller increments, just hold shift while scaling. This looks about right. And then we're just going to move it over, press G to um, G to move, and then press the X button to move it along the X axis. So that's a little bit hard to see, but you'll get it. This looks about right. This is how we're going to do it. So now this circle is exactly the size of the base of the cup. And the first thing we're going to do is make it a an actual surface and not just a uh, circle. We're going to make it into a face, multiple actually. In order to do that, we are going to press tab to go into edit mode. And we are going to um, press E to extrude. Um, press left button, left mouse button to um, end the extrusion process and then just scale these down. So we have a little bit of a rim here. Uh, make sure that these are roughly squares. Uh, it's not that important. It's just, there we go. Then what you're going to do is press control F and grid fill. And as you can see, this gives us a nice uh, surface, flat surface. I know it looks a little bit bulged from the top if you look at it like this, but uh, that's just the way those lines go. It's actually a flat surface, but all in quads, which is nice. Um, you can press Alt and uh, click on any of these edge loops to select the entire edge loop. Obviously, because this is a grid fill, we can't select all the way around but we don't have to. This, for example, we can select all the way around. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the front view like we did before, and we're gonna zoom in right here, and we're going to follow this, whoops, sorry. We're going to follow this contour of the cup right here, right to the top, uh, and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. And actually what we want to do is select that circle like we did and scale it down a little bit more like this. Make sure that it's still right on the other side. Yeah, it's perfect. Because we're going to go along the inside of the cup right here. So what we're going to do now is uh, also move it up on the Z. Oh, whoops, select all of it move it up on the z-axis a little bit to the inside like so. And now um, select this outer edge loop, go into one, and hit E to extrude, and just extrude it up like so. Uh, make sure to press Z to constrain it to the z-axis, and we're going to extrude up all the way to here. And then we are going to scale it a little bit. Um, make sure to change this back to median point. And we're going to scale it up a little bit to fit it a little bit better. Then we're going to hit E to extrude. Click the left mouse button. S to scale up. And we're going to scale to around here. Then 
we're going to do the next step. E to extrude, Z to constrain to the Z axis, up to the next level. And then we want to go S to scale this, make it a little bit like so. And as you can see, it's already starting to take shape. So we're now at this point, so we're going to do the same thing again. It helps to put on uh, wireframe mode as well. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to hit E for extrude, and then we're going to click, and then we're going to hit S for scale, scale it up, and we're going to extrude it again on the Z-axis, always uh, constrained to the Z-axis, it's important. Then we're going to scale this up, go right here, and we're going to E, click, S to scale, E to extrude, Z, you can see the buttons I'm pressing down here. I know it's a little bit hard to see right now, but that's why I'm saying them. Then scale it up again. Make sure that this is nice and snug here. And then E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, Z to constrain. And doo -doo. if you have to stop in the middle like, oopsie, I always do this. If you have to stop in the middle like this because of some mistake, uh, don't worry, you don't have to do it over again. Just press G to move it like so, and Z to constrain it to the Z-axis. Move it up like this, scale it again to fit the curvature or the slope here. And uh, as you can see, it looks a little bit different around here. Um, so we're going to each extrude, scale it up a little bit, each extrude again, go up to here, and we're going to press Control R to add an edge loop here. And we're going to scale this like so. Uh, first of all, we can scale this one to fit like this. Then we're going to add some add some more edge loops here. Scale them like this, go right here, scale them. So let's get a little bit of a bulge going here. Another one. I'm a little bit anal with these things. You don't have to do this meticulous. Probably not going to be very visible later on anyway. All right, this looks good so far. This is just going to go up like that. All right, and now we are at the interesting part because if you look at some reference images of these cups, or if you have one at home, it's uh, it pays to look at the thing that you're modeling. And if we check out one of these solo cups that we're modeling right now, I don't know if you can see this, but the this lip right here is actually kind of um, folded out, so. Let me just try to show you this right here. Instead of the lip going like this, it actually goes like this. And that's what we have to try and do now. Okay. So since we are starting on the inside, this is actually not that difficult. Um, so we are going to select this uh, edge loop, just extrude it up, press Z to extrude only in the Z axis, obviously, like we've been doing this whole time. And we are on the inside right now, which means the inside is going to fold outward. So we're going to go up to this very top edge right here, and then we're going to extrude this and don't move it when you extrude it, just pr press escape and then scale it up, extrude, press escape, scale it a little bit and now you can move it on the z-axis. You can move it down a little bit like so and we can keep doing this and go around that bend. And as you can see, we now made our way to the outside of this contour of this thing. So now we're going to repeat the process basically and just go around the outside here. Um, all right, so just keep extruding. Oops, just keep just keep extruding, but only in the Z axis. Always press the Z button, it's important. We can go down here, for example, and then scale it up like so. And then we can add an edge loop here, scale it up a little bit to add the bulge. And just keep Z down here. Now we're just constantly scale up like so. Um, keep Z down here. Scale down a little bit like so. Keep Z go down here. Scale down more like so. 
And now we're at the point where we have to kind of wrap over ourselves right here. So what we're going to do is E, scale down a little bit. And this is a little bit hard to see now. So what we're going to do is actually go into this 3D view, press comma to see it properly, and zoom in here so we can get a better picture of what it looks like. And we're going to scale it down to around here, I'd say. And go back into this. Okay, and then we're going to go back into this. And we're going to go E, Z, go to the top of this. And then we're going to go E, Z, go around here, where the other one is. This is something that the viewer is not going to see, so it doesn't have to be super detailed. Scale it up to around there. We can add another loop cut here. Scale up, add a loop cut here. Scale up, add another loop cut. And then E, Z, up here, scale down. E, Z, go here, scale down there. And now E, escape. And we're going to scale this down so that we are going to be and then extrude it down all the way through here and then we can start making the outside of our cup now if we go into 3d uh, i'm going to turn on the solid view for this uh, you can see that we have ourselves a nice lip exactly the way it is on the real solo cup and extrude z go down scale extrude z go down scale and now uh, you can be anal about it like i am and add these loop cuts you can keep going and this is the easy part just e z down to here and scale it down to around there and now we're going to e escape s scale it down to there e z oops z and go down to here scale it down to around there E, escape, S to scale, down to here, E, Z, go down all the way down here, like so. As you can see, it's kind of starting to take shape here. Uh, I tried using a solidify modifier and just doing it in 2D, but it didn't doesn't result in very good topology, so I just do it like this, it's not much slower. Like this. E, escape, S to scale. Down to here. And then E, Z, bring it down here. S to scale down. Looks about right. E, escape, S scale it down to there and now we're just going to e z bring it down below the other one and that's our cup now we just need a lower surface here so we're going to go into um, bottom view by pressing control 7 and we are going to e to extrude escape to stop s to scale do the same thing here and then control F grid fill and now if we look in solid view we have ourselves a cup isn't that lovely with all the ridges that we need and it's all to scale uh, just to be sure you can press the end uh, you can look at the side menu here and look at the item tab and as long as the scale here says 111 you're all good if it doesn't, if you can, if you see something like zero point whatever, and your cup is super small, 
or your cup is the right size but these scale values are super small then what you have to do is just select the cup press Control a and then on scale apply the scale and then these values turn into one and blender knows that this is the right size for the cup i'm going to turn these back to one because it was correct all right now the next thing we have to do is shade this smooth and as you can see that looks obviously horrible we're going to get some really bad shading on this so what we have to do is go back into edit mode and add some proximity loops here these are just going to make it easier for blender to understand um, the topology of this cup when it comes to shading oops what did i just do what did i just do did i just do something wrong i'm gonna go okay no i didn't sometimes you click something and then you're afraid that you did something so just press uh, Control z to undo get another loop cut as you can see when we put these loop cuts around these edges here we are getting kind of these uh, nicely shaded kind of round nice looking edges um, if we stay down here oops. 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 Also kind of somehow round one tablet. And here, as you see, it's still a little bit weird around here. We just close the side easy. But then I had to put it up here, and now we're better. And as you can see, here, you can see exactly where the stops. Oops, no. I had to recut here, and here, and this is a lot better than There's a lot of loop cuts here, which means Blender has a lot of ways to understand this topology. Um, so there's really no reason to do this here, and we want this to look smooth anyway. So no big deal. Now the inside of the cup, same thing. Um, now it might be a little bit difficult for you to look inside the cup so there's actually a trick you can do if you press 7 to view the cup from above um, you can then do uh, alt b and you can draw over half the cup and then only half the cup will be visible to you it's like a cross section then if you go into front view uh, you can actually just go into edit put in these loop cuts makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. And up here, just like so. Yeah. Most of these won't be visible because of the liquid anyway, so don't worry about that. All right, uh, to undo this, just press Alt and B again, and it goes away. All right, so believe it or not, this is the modeling of the cup all done. It's uh, really not that hard, which is why I was able to do it. <laughs> Uh, people were kind of mystified at how I was able to do this for my first project, but it's really not that hard. Uh, you can see that there's some like some pointy edges here. Um, we could just fix that by pressing Control Two, uh, which adds a sub a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, we can just apply it real quick, apply it, and then you can see this is what it does. It just divides the surfaces we have into smaller surfaces which uh, gives the the smooth shader a lot more to work with uh, which makes it a lot look a lot better what we can do now is start shading this cup if you want to change your layout uh, in blender if you want more screens and stuff just go to the corner like this until your cursor turns into a cross and then drag over and you get a new viewport then we can position this right here and we can go into a shader editor here uh, we got to go in here change our uh, render engine to cycles go to GPU to make it quicker and we're gonna add a quick sunlight just real actually no we're not we're going to add an uh, HDRI an HDRI is basically a 360 degree picture um, that gives you values for your light sources whoops so let me just come on Sometimes this can be really finicky here with the two arrows. There we go. So what we're going to do is add this to the world. You got to go to the world uh, properties tab right here. And where it says color, you're going to click it. Click the little uh, button right next to it, the little dot. And then you're going to cr click environment texture. If we go into rendered view now, you can see it's just purple. Everything's purple. It's kind of like hell, just not as fun. So we're going to click on open right here and we are going to go to our folder wherever it is. We're going to use this Kiara Interior 4K HDR from HDRI Haven, uh, which is a website where you can get free HDRs, completely free, no charge, no caveats. 
uh, up to 16, 16K, I think. It's pretty cool. Uh, open this image, and it takes a while, and here we go. So this is just someone's room, I suppose, someone's apartment, which is where I imagine a uh, party would take place with a solo cup like this, um, which is good. Um, we can see there's a gigantic window here, and what I like to do is just add a sunlight that comes from there. So we're going to add a lamp, a sun lamp here. I'm going to go into front view, put it over here. So that it kind of lines up with the window from the cup's perspective. Like this, like so. Uh, go into 3D view, pull this towards the cup from a few perspectives to make it line up. That looks good. And then we can go and zoom in a little bit. And now, if as you can see, if we turn off the sun lamp, there's not much of a difference here. So we can go in here and actually increase the strength a little bit as well. And now if we do this, you can see that the shadow in the cup, for example, goes away. And uh, it's a little bit harsh right now, but I just want to use this for shading reference. And if the background image is a little bit distracting while shading, just go into the render properties and go down here into film and check transparent and it goes away. So now do this again. Open up that. Just position this nicely so you can look at it. Um, let me just check something here. Yeah, okay. And just position this nicely like so. And then we're going to open the shader editor, edit, editor here. And I uh, can't talk anymore. Check use notes. And um, oh, we're still in the light. You got to select the cup, obviously. And then click on new for creating a new material. And then we get this principal BSDF already installed. Uh, BSDF is a kind of um, mathematical function that calculates how light interacts with surfaces. Um, I don't know how basic I should make this tutorial. Uh, it's just it stands for bidirectional uh, scattering distribution function, I think, if I remember that right. Um, and what it does is just it calculates how light is supposed to behave on surfaces and you can configure the surface right here with these sliders. For our cup, for example, we want to first choose a reddish base color, like so. Um, looks kind of purple to me, kind of pinkish. So we can just do this. It's just kind of a basic red. Uh the value up to one there we go and um, that's it for the outside color right well look at the reflections not right uh, not quite right is it um, it's way too rough it kind of looks like hard plastic right now what we want to do is change this roughness value if I turn this up you can see the reflections c almost go away completely and if I turn this down it kind of looks like a mirror, it kind of looks a little bit like um, like lacquer or something or whatever that's called. I'm not, I, it's not my first language. I don't know. So we want to find a nice, a nice uh, roughness value that kind of looks like a solo cup, which yeah, this this looks kind of good. And this is where it helps to have the um, this is where it helps to have the HDR because you get some reflections already in the scene. Um, yeah, kind of like this, maybe a little bit less roughness, even still, kind of like that. We can tweak it more later. Then uh, you'll notice that it looks like a very hard, thick object right now. And that's because a thin, uh, like plastic cup is going to let some light through. And um, we can simulate that by turning up the subsurface scattering value right here. And we're going to turn this up to around 0 0.05, I think is what I used in my final render. And you can see it turns up a little bit. And you can see that, you can see the line of this shadow right here. You can see it on the inside. And 
on the outside on the other side because the light is going through the surface a little bit. Some people say said the value was a little bit too high. Let's try 2.5. Yeah, it looks about right. And uh, that's all that I did for this material. But of course, a solo cup is white on the inside, right? So how do we do that? So in order to make the inside of this cup a different material, we have to assign that material to the faces inside of it. So go back into solid mode here. Um, go into edit mode, press 7 to look right from above, press B to get the box select tool, and then select all of these. And as you can see, it looks like all of them are selected, but all of them are not selected. Um, the best way to do this is to turn off the sub subdivision surface modifier for now, right here in the uh, display modifier in viewport button. Just turn that off and you can see that most of it actually isn't selected right now. Um, go to the top again, do the same thing again, and as you can see, more and more things are getting selected, but some things just don't. So what you do is just go into face select mode, um, actually go into 7 again, do this again, and then more is selected even, and actually looks like this time everything is selected. So just go into face, oh no, here we go. There's some faces here that are obscured. So what we do here is just select them um, with shift, press on them, select them manually. It's not that much work. Once you've selected all these faces inside, you also have to make sure that all of the outside of this sip of this uh, lip right here is also white. So press shift to select more things and alt to select an, a face loop and make sure to click on one of the edges right here to select this. Then we also want to select this and turn on wireframe to get the inside. This is not that important since nobody's going to see it anyway but we will have some subsurface scattering. So this is the last, oh God, this is going to be hard to select. Here we go. This is the last edge loop we want to uh, select here, this one. All of these are going to be white. Uh, everything else will be the red that we already have. So now we're going to go into the materials tab, press on the plus to add another material here and then just press on Assign. And if we go into the Material Preview here now, we can see that the inside is already white because the standard material is white. Uh, turn on the modifier again. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Just turn it on. Um, the standard material that you get is already a kind of grayish white. So what we can do now is open this up, actually go into the Materials tab, and click a new material here for the second slot. We can call this red and call this one white. And what we want to do in our shader editor now, press N to get rid of this huge thing right here. Uh, so the white's fine. We're going to use this white, just a little bit more white here. Um, we're going to do the same value here in the subsurface, 0.0. .0 what do we do? 2.5? Right there. Um, this way, some of the red will actually shine through into the white as well from the side where the sun is. I don't know if we're going to see much of that here. I can see a little bit. It, it looks better in the final render, obviously. And uh, we're going to also do the same value for the roughness to do this. You can actually choose the slot right here and go back to the red material. Hover your mouse over the roughness value, press Control C to copy, and then go back to the white slot and just hover your mouse over the roughness, press Control V to paste it there. And now it's basically the same material except white. Okay, so you can probably see that these materials don't look quite right. 
and I just realized the reason for this. I the value I used for subsurface is way too high. Um, you can see this if it's like you can see on the on the lip here. It just looks orange kind of, and it just looks a little bit too soft. So what we're gonna do is change this down to about a tenth of what it is right now. I don't know why I made this mistake. Go to about 0 0.002 on the subsurface. And as you can see, it looks a bit, little bit more like plastic now. We can do the same thing for the red material. Just put this down to 0 0.002. And it'll make it look a lot better. There we go. That looks a lot more realistic now. And this is kind of a lesson too. If you just mess up a setting like that, um, while trying to find out what materials you want to use and how to configure them, you just have to try things out. Uh, you just have to go through some go through some things and fiddle with the values. And uh, yeah, so you see this shadow thing that I showed earlier is a, a lot more subtle now, and that's it looks a lot better this way. So that's the cup done. It's really not anything else. I know the bottom could be a little bit better, but nobody's gonna see that anyway. Uh, it's just a bland old surface. All right, let's uh, work on the liquid. First, we got to go into edit mode again. It helps to turn off this thing. Um, go into top view with 7, and you're going to want to make sure with box select that your entire bottom surface is selected. Then go into circle select with C, change the size of the circle so it's appropriate, and just go around the cup like this to whatever level you want to go. I'm going to see what this is like. Whoops, don't do that. And escape to get out of circle select. See how far up you are. I think we can go up one more level. So let's just bring up the circle again and just select one more of these levels. And actually, we can make ourselves make our lives a little bit easier just by going s uh, shift alt on this edge, select the whole edge loop or face loop in this case. Do that for all of these. There we go. Now we have all of these selected. What we're going to do is duplicate them. And to duplicate them, you press uh, shift D and then press escape, press P to separate by selection and now we have a new object over here we can hide the cup which we're going to rename cup here cup instead of circle and this one's going to be the liquid and this cup we can hide it now and as you can see we have this neat little inside uh, section of the cup right here and what we can do now is select this face, uh, select this edge loop, sorry, right here, and just E to extrude, uh, escape or uh, or uh, left mouse button, then scale it in, like we did on the other side, and then Control F grid fill. And here we go. This is going to be our liquid object. Before we do anything else, one very important thing is to go into edit mode here and uh, select all with A and then press F3, type in normals and click on this recalculate normals or you can use shift N. Another tip, if you don't remember a keyboard shortcut, just press F3 and search for what it does. Uh, or what it's called, the function that you want to use, and it'll show you a keyboard shortcut right here. So you can do Shift N, or you can do it like this. Click on Recalculate Normals, and this is just so Blender knows where the outside of this object is. You can see that there's some shading issues here. Uh, same reason, you know, we need some loop cuts. Uh, so Control R to add a loop cut right here. Control R to add a loop cut right there. And that's good. The first thing we have to do is actually um, create a little bit of surface tension in this liquid. And in order to do that, we just go into edit mode. And uh, with nothing selected, we select this edge or face loop, go into face select mode, and then Alt, and click on this 
the connecting edge here and then we have this selected now and we go we can go into one and we can go into we can press uh, G and then Z to constrain it to the Z axis and just lift it up a little bit scale it out a tiny little bit like so and then we're going to add an edge loop right next to it like so and we're going to G Z pull this down a little bit like this and then we have created now oh, we can add another edge loop on top here and then uh, G Z pull it up a little bit now we've created a little bit of uh, surface tension if we turn on our cup again you can see that it's kind of clinging to the side of the cup um, and we're also going to take this entire object and scale it down by just a tiny little bit like so to avoid weird clipping stuff later on so the next thing we're going to do which just makes this thing a little bit more dynamic I suppose is go into edit mode again go into vertex select mode here and we're going to just choose this vertex right here at random one of the vertices of this center disk and we're going to make sure up here that uh, proportional editing is turned on you can also press O on the keyboard to turn it off and on as you can see and we're going to go with proportional editing fall off uh, smooth here you can have different fall off uh, kind of algorithms I guess uh, we're gonna go for smooth and now if we press G and then Z we can see that the whole surface is moving why is that that's because if we scroll down on the mouse wheel right here we are going to get down like this um, this circle shows you how many of the vertices around it are also affected when you move that one vertice vertex so what we're going to do is just pull this up a little bit maybe not that extreme like this and choose another one decrease the a little bit and just oops just play around with it just disturb the surface a little bit uh, yeah that looks good doesn't need more than this so let's now uh, start shading this liquid um, for that let's just turn off the cup and uh, we have our liquid here and we want to make sure that um, there's a different material in here so we don't edit the material of the cup so let us remove these materials and add a whole new material slot with a whole new material we call this liquid then we can open up this and open the shader editor and to remove that sidebar and obviously we're going to start out with a principled surface shader here and that's fine we're not going to use that because that's not how you make liquids um, obviously liquids are uh, tricky um, but there's a shader for this uh, that we can use and it is the glass shader here um, glass glass and liquids kind of behave the same way so we're going to connect this to the surface here and as you can see it immediately turns into glass and uh, I turned on the background again so we can actually see it a little bit better the effect of the refraction here now what is this here we have this thing called IOR um, IOR actually stands for index of refraction and these are values or this is the value that any um, translucent material has um, determining how much the light is bent when it goes through it or refracted and uh, you can just google this and then you come across lists like these and you can see that the index of refraction of water is about 1.325 at uh, around room temperature and since um, cola is like w like just black water um, we're going to use the water uh, value so it was 1.35 or something something like this um, check again yeah 1.325 actually 1.325 and this is water now uh, behaves like water to the light but obviously it's just completely transparent we don't want that um, 
we want it to be black. So we're going to do that by adding a, where is it, shader, a volume absorption shader. As you can see, our material has two inputs here, surface and volume. This is a volume shader. This is a surface shader. If you plug this into the volume, nothing happens. It just goes away. Oops. It just uh, it just becomes completely invisible because the render engine doesn't know what to do here. So make sure to always connect these uh, BSDF shaders to the surface and volume shaders to the volume. Now if we do this, nothing really changes. And even if we turn this to like a nice little brown, orangey brown here, like so, nothing changes. Um, why? Well, we have to turn up the density here. Uh, I found that the value 42 gives us a nice, nice looking cola. Actually, we can crank it up even more here. Um, just, I, I don't have a reference right next to me right now. Uh, this is really bright because this is where the, the light is. And I feel like a little bit more, maybe a little bit more like this. Yeah, that looks about right for some, actually looks a little bit like coffee now, maybe a little bit less. Let's go for like 75. Um, for our cola and that's the material that's all we have here if we turn on the cup again you can see how it looks inside the cup looks nice looks like uh, looks like some coke uh, yeah now what we're going to do is turn off the cup and we are going to add the bubbles oh no actually I'm, I'm lying first of all we're going to um, add into this shader here into this uh, material actually we're going to add some um, displacement. So type in displacement. Oh, by the way, if you had, if you hit Shift A, and then you can go to the search thing, or just hit S, and then uh, you can type in any shader you want, and it's going to bring it up. So we're going to find a displacement node like this. Plug this displacement into here. Okay. So in order for this displacement uh, node to actually do something, we have to first go into um, down here into the material tab. And then go to settings and turn displacement from bump only to displacement and bump. And now you see all of a sudden something has happened. It has kind of bulged out like this, kind of weird looking. Um, that's because we haven't really told it yet uh, how to bulge out. And in order to do that, we're going to go into here. Oops. And we're going to add, it's lagging a little bit. There we go. We're going to add a texture. And we're going to choose a, uh, I don't know what I did last time, just a noise texture for now. And connect this FAC input, that stands for factor, to the height here. And now it is really going to lag. <laughs> um, all right. Um, you have to be careful with this. You best do it in object mode and make sure to turn down the scale to like something really, really, really small. And then you can turn on the rendered mode again. And uh, you can see there's basically no effect now. Uh, if you turn this up too high, like you can see what it does, right? You can see how it bulges out like this. You can make nice crystals like that, for example. It's really cool. But we are just trying to give our um, cola some texture here. So it, turn that down. And another thing we can do is actually look at this texture right here using the Node Wrangler. Um, look at this displacement texture that we're making with this noise. We can scale it up a little bit, let it update here. Um, and then we can adjust the scale here again. This is way too much, so 0 0.5 maybe. Maybe divide that by 2 again. That looks a lot better here. Uh, maybe scale it down a little bit. Okay, let's see how that looks. Looks a lot better. It's just kind of giving it some dis dis uh, how do you say that? Some disturbances in the force here, um, to make it look a little bit more exciting. Maybe like someone's just had it in his hand and put it down. Um, yeah. So this is the material we have for the freaking liquid here. Next up, what we want to do is add some bubbles to this to this liquid because there are bubbles coming out of it um, because it's carbonated, it's cola. So what we do for this is just, first of all, add a icosphere for the bubbles. Just uh, scale it down a little bit. 
Uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter how big it is really. G to pull it over here. Uh, it doesn't matter how big this is. Uh, in the end, it's just um, it's going to be determined by the particle system itself. So we're going to add a subdivision surface to this. Come on, boop, boop. here we go. That's nice. It's good enough. Uh, shade smooth, and this is going to be our prototype bubble. And let's go immediately into the shading of this. What we're going to do here is end this away. Um, add a new material. Delete this BDSF shader and 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 add another glass shader. Come on, shader. And we want to have some glass here. If we put this into the surface, you see it's just like a marble. It's not very useful to us. Um, first of all, we have to give it a good IOR. I found that 0 0.75 is good for air bubbles on liquids. As you can see, it looks kind of nice. And then we have the problem that bubbles, um, like in, as part of foam, kind of have a tinge to them on the outside. Uh, in in for example, in your bathtub, the foam looks white, um, and on your Coke, the foam looks kind of brownish. So what we want to do here is give it a little bit of a brown tinge on the outside. And to do that, let me just give us more space here. And to do that, we can actually use an input node here called, if I can find it, Fresnel. And uh, I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Fresnel gives you basically this kind of map here. Um, no matter from which angle you look, it gives you like the outside kind of um, aura around the object. Uh, it, it, really what it does mathematically is check where reflections happen and where absorption happens and stuff like that. But that's not that important right now. So this Fresnel thing we're going to use, uh, we're going to use together with the glass BSDF so we're going to need a mix shader here and the mix shader just allows you to mix two things together uh, oh, come on let me just i hate this remove this connection here and we're going to add this here and i don't know what's wrong with that there we go surface and as you can see this is now combining together kind of weirdly weird looking i know but we're going to fix that now first we're going to add a a uh, color ramp. First we're going to add a color ramp to this map here. So let's look at the output of this real quick. Um, with this color ramp we can kind of change the way this is uh, this is outputting the colors obviously. Um, we want to have a little bit more a little bit more black here kind of like this. Then let's look at our mix shader again. Um, we want to also make this white color here actually let's go back here this white color on the outside we don't want it to be white so we're going to change this to kind of a brown like so kind of like this and we're going to get rid of some of the value of it make it a little bit paler that's about right i think uh yeah that looks good uh, that looks good color wise anyway let's deselect this to see it better and um give us a little bit more of that brown and then we go back into the mix shader, we see that it kind of looks weird, doesn't look like we want it to. Um, if we go all the way to this side, we get just the glass. If we go all the way to this side, we get just the Fresnel. And we want to kind of mix it together, but as you can see, this doesn't really match up. So we're just going to play with this IOR of the Fresnel. Kind of just play around with it until it looks good. We start at zero, move our way up here until this black in the center that's expanding right now kind of relegates itself to the middle only kind of like and then we can play around with the color ramp again to do something like that that's about right that's about what i want here so that's the shading of this all done actually now that i'm thinking about it we're not going to use a mix shader here we're going to use the add shader which just overlays the two shaders on top of each other we're going to do this and give this to the surface here that looks a lot better not not as dark okay so this is the the individual bubble all done um, so now we want to distribute this bubble all over our surface of the liquid here so what we can do is select the liquid go to this particle tab right here 
and press the plus button to add a particle system and we're going to press here and this fills the scene with some very spiky long hair here but that's obviously not what we want um, what we want is okay it's making it really slow if your render uh, is like making your computer go really slow and you can't really work there's a play pause button up here that you can press to interrupt the render of your viewport so we're going to use the hair but we're going to render it here under the render tab um, we're going to render it wait here we go render as object and the instance object is going to be our icosphere now we can turn this back on and you can see that our icosphere is all over this thing now but it's way too big obviously so we're going to scale this down to like I don't know it's divided by a hundred here that looks a lot better already so now we have a bunch of bubbles around this but that doesn't look good does it and they're also very small let's make it three they that's too big just got to play around with these settings it's uh, it's just playing around okay some of these are okay and then we're gonna scale randomness we're just gonna put on one so that they're kind of randomly scattered let's make this one five yeah that looks good that looks good okay now that we've done that um, another thing we can do is um, weight paint this onto the surface so we, we don't need the bubbles on the side here and we sure as hell don't want the bubbles like randomly on this cup to give these bubbles the right uh, distribution because on a real drink the bubbles don't just appear randomly um, on the surface they actually cling to the sides of the to the sides of the cup and to any objects in in the cup as well or in the in the liquid so what we can do here is the following we're going to go into weight paint mode here and we're going to just start to paint some weight here onto this and this creates a uh, vertex group and then in the particle system right here we're going to um, go down to vertex groups and we're going to go to density and choose the group that was just uh, created for us and as you can see now all the particles that we create kind of clump to where we paint on this on this uh, object so we're just going to go around we don't want it everywhere obviously so we can oops we can also just uh, take away some of this randomly uh, it looks still a little bit grid like um, and what we can do here is instead of where is it instead of jittered we can choose random that kind of helps that uh, that grid like thing that we saw and then we can boost this up to like 2500 maybe get a little bit more of them and then oops, maybe, 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 maybe take you away from here take you away from there and just give it a little bit too much a bit too much so in the middle most of the other sides oh uh, maybe you know, bridge a little bit this. if we go into rendered view now we can see that we have and go into object mode so we can deselect this we can have uh, we, we see some bubbles here if we turn on the cup we also see that none of the bubbles are glitching through on the side here which is very important and now if you look into the cup we have bubbles um, another thing we will do which I didn't do in my original render but which is very easy to do as well is let's hide the cup again we are going to uh, go into material preview as well go back into object mode okay material preview is not very good with uh, transparent stuff but okay we're going to add a second particle system let's say this are the surface bubbles and now we're going to do some I guess uh, subsurface bubbles and this particle system is also here we're also going to oh boy we're also going to uh, use the object here this icosphere and we are also going to scale it down a lot I don't know something like this but and this is the important part we are going to instead of emit from faces we're going to emit from volume let's just render this real quick so we can see inside of it now you can see some bubbles inside of the inside of the liquid and um, instead of jittered we're going to go random again 
random distribution and you can see some bubbles under the surface but we're going to use the same group here and that'll just make it so they're actually underneath the bubbles that are bubbling up and not just randomly somewhere all right and what we're also going to do is turn down the number of these to like 500 yeah that looks nice 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 okay okay i haven't been recording this step <laughs> let's just do it all over for our next step and the last step is making the uh, ice cubes so what we do for this we start with a cube right here nice little cube you can leave it as big as it is it's fine then we go into edit mode right click subdivide twice and what this does is just subdivide the the different um, faces here into smaller faces then we're going to give it a subdivision surface subdivision surface modifier with control 2 and from here we're going to go into the add modifier menu and we're going to add a displace modifier here and we're going to go into the textures menu here click new and with displace already selected we're in luck um, because otherwise we would have selected it then we're going to go to the clouds texture here and as you can see it's already applied it to our displace modifier we can shade this smooth and um, we're going to play with the settings a little bit 0 0.85 usually works quite well maybe a little bit bigger this the depth and the nabla you can leave as they are and then we can go into the modifier and turn down the strength a little bit here oh maybe not maybe not quite as low as this i'm sorry for yawning maybe something like like this and then turn up the size again a little bit there we go that looks about right maybe a little bit too chunky maybe turn down this a little bit more like so and now we have ourselves a nice little ice cube except uh, usually in an ice cube there are bubbles in it so what we're going to do is go to the particle system well first of all let's give it a material actually let's just give it a material let's go to the shader editor here press n to get rid of that give it a new material get rid of this go to the rendered view and add a glass shader you already guessed it because this is ice and now we're going to go back to our table here and we're going to control f find ice okay ice 1.309 put that in here 1.309 and now we have ourselves a little bit of ice um, i would turn up the roughness a little bit tiny little bit roughness never hurts um, actually what we can do see what the roughness does is actually just turn it a little bit milky like this which is good because uh, ice cubes aren't always completely uh, clear so instead of turning the roughness value up like this what we're going to do is get a texture get another noise texture in here put the fac factor into the roughness here and now we can just do you use the node wrangler to see what we're doing here and we can add in a color ramp to edit this factor a little bit for example make the blacks stand out a little bit more like this sorry like this just play around with it and then see how that looks put this into roughness and then as you can see there's some rough spots on it and some see-through spots and it makes the ice look nice and icy <laughs> but there's still something missing and that's something we're going to do now um, we're going to add some bubbles into this ice because usually ice cubes do have bubbles as as far as i know uh, i don't use them much so let's add some bubbles into this ice and we're going to do that with a particle system like we did before particle settings and for this let's show our sphere that we made if i can find it oh it's inside of the cube obviously yeah take the cube with g just put it to the side for a bit and this icosphere um, shift d to duplicate it and then into the materials here we're going to click this little two button to make this a separate material and we're going to go into the shader editor again let's focus on the sphere when you have a an object selected and you your camera is not focused on it you can just press period on the numpad to 
uh, focus on like this. Go into the shader editor. We're obviously making ice now, water ice, which means we don't want this weird color here. So just delete these two things. Delete the add shader and make this pure glass, except um, instead of the 0 0.75, we're going to use the same value we used in the glass shader we just made in the ice shader, I mean, which would be 1.309. This put this in here, and there we have it. These are our, going to be our bubbles now, and we're going to name these ice bubbles, and we're going to name this one cola bubble. Okay, now that we are done with the bubbles and the shading of them, we can close this editor again. Go back to the ice, and we need to be in rendered view so we can look through it for what we're doing now. So we're going to go into the particle settings here and we're going to render these as an object again, these particles, and that object is going to be our ice bubbles bubble, right? And now, oh, I forgot to put it to hair. Don't forget to change this particle system to hair. Now, as you can see, these bubbles are obviously all on the surface. So again, what we did earlier, we have to go to the, uh, we have to go to the emitter here, emit from volume, and now they're going to be inside of the ice cube. This looks kind of good. We're going to change the scale uh, randomness here to one, make them kind of random, and I think that's good enough. In my original one, I had three particle systems, some with uh, big bubbles, some with small bubbles, and some with really tiny bubbles. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave this as it is now. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is just duplicate this three times. One, two. Now, these all look the same. So now we're going to go into these and we're going to go into this texture. And you can see we have a three here, which means that three objects are using the same text. And what we're going to do now is just on this mid middle cube, we're going to click this button to make a new copy of this texture. And we're going to just slightly play around with the scale here to change the way it's deforming the cube a little bit. Let me just do this in, in here. Just change the shape a little bit so it doesn't look all the same. Same thing here. Go to this thing where it says 2. Click on it to make a copy and change the value of it a little bit like so. And there we go. There we have our three ice cubes. The cup is way smaller than these ice cubes. And that means we have to take the ice cubes one by one or all together, doesn't matter. And we're going to scale them down really small, get them over, oops, get them over here. As you can see, the bubbles are now kind of enlargening and that's okay. We're going to fix that in a second. Scale them down even more because the bubbles stay the same size as you can see. And then put them across here and then just uh, go into the particle systems. These are all shared still, as you can see, three, so we only have to change this once. We have to just go ahead and change this to like, let me just see the rendered view. Yeah, that looks about right. That looks about right. Okay, now we're going to take our ice cubes and we're going to put them into our drink. Uh, for that, we're going to go back into solid view. We're going to take this one G and then shift Z to move it along the two axes that aren't the Z axes. And then G, Z, put it down into the drink. It may still be a little bit too big, so let's do it like this. Now we're going to go into the side menu here, go to item and see what the size is and copy this onto all of these guys. There we go, so they're the same size, more or less. And now that we've done that, we can actually position them in here in a nice dynamic way, rotate them a little bit like that. This GZ. Ice will always be at least half underwater mass wise. So maybe something like this for that one. And we're going to add a camera now. So we're going to go Shift A, camera. And if you want the camera to see what you see, just go Control, Alt, and Zero. And then we have a nice camera view. And then another trick you can do if you want to render just the camera view is to just hold Control, 
and B to make a box select and just select the camera. And now if we go into rendered view, it's only going to render what's actually seen by the camera if I click the play button here. There we go. Um, I've applied the scale to these, which you can do. Um, you just have to uh, adjust the particle sizes again. Um, also, something I can see right now is that these particles are sticking out of the side here. The problem was that uh, if you go into the scale here, what we had earlier were actually negative numbers, which means that these were inverted. I don't know when I did that, but I did that some somehow for some reason. So these were inverted, which means the normals are wrong. They're the wrong way around. So it thinks that the volume of this cube is on the outside instead of the inside. So all we have to do is go into edit mode, select all faces, and then just hit shift N to recalculate those normals, go out of edit mode, and the bubbles are back inside of the cube. But now, even then, um, we have this problem where if we show the liquid again, that the bubbles of the liquid and the liquid surface itself it extends into the ice cube. And that just looks bad. It looks like the ice cubes are just kind of um, superimposed on the image, which they aren't. They're actually objects in the image. And that's what we want to convey here. We're going to take these ice cubes and we're going to make them cut holes into the liquid. And to do that, we have to make sure that on all of these ice cubes, everything is applied here except the particles um, so we got to make sure to apply the displace apply the um, apply the displace apply the subdivision and apply the scale apply everything and make sure the particles are working right working right and then you go to the liquid and you do the same here you apply the subdivision not the particles just the subdivision add the modifier it's called boolean here and then we're going to select this cube. And you'll find that if we hide this cube now, there's a cube-shaped hole in this liquid. And it's pretty cool. And we're going to do the same thing for all three of these. So we're going to add another boolean, and then add another boolean, and select the last cube. And now we can hide all three of these, and we can see that there's still bubbles happening here. So if we're happy with the position of the ice cubes, which I think we are, we can actually apply these booleans now. Apply them, apply this one, and apply that one. Now we've got a mesh that kind of looks like this, and oh, oh no, no, no problem. I thought it was clipping out of the cup, but it's just clipping into the cup, which is okay. That's And yeah, we got some overlap here, but that's not a big deal. That's not gonna be visible to the camera at all. So now what we're gonna do is repaint this particle system to fit around the ice cubes. So we make sure these are going to go back into a paint mode. I'm going to make sure they're really small. I'm going to paint these particles around the system. Yeah. Froth. Froth. That's a nice word. Oops. And uh, I remember right click. Get rid of some up here. Okay. That looks good. Now go back into object mode here. And we can look at it rendered for a bit. Play button. And then we have ourselves a nice little Coke in a solo cup with some ice cubes and I know it's going to be hard to see but I'll put the finished render into the I'll put it into the video right here. Um yeah, that's how you make that. Uh, I'm not going to bother with a table this time. Um but yeah, there you go. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped.